Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the levels of organization that we really haven't had a lot of experience with yet. And so if we look at the levels of organization, we looked at the chemical levels, which talks about atoms and molecules and macromolecules. We've looked at the cellular level that talks about the organelles that make up a cell and the cell functioning. What we're going to look at in this screencast is what is a tissue and what is an organ and what is an organ system and what are the different types and how they actually will combine to form an actual organism. So let's start. Tissue is simply a group of similar cells with some sort of a common function. In um, all organisms, there's four major types of tissue. The first type is called epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue, is main, its main purpose is it covers body surfaces. We have connective tissue, which its main purpose is to kind of hold the body together and give some support. We have nervous tissue, which actually controls everything that's happening in the body. And then we have muscle tissue, and obviously allows the body to move. And down here we have actually some an example of microsco microscopic cells of different tissue types. So we have connective tissue, we have nervous tissue, this is muscle tissue, and then this is epithelial tissue. This is actually from a gland. So let's talk about each one of these different types of tissues. First type of tissue is epithelial tissue. Um, the plural is epithelia, singular is epithelium, and its main job is to cover. So epithelial tissue covers. And now I put a couple silly pictures up here that have nothing to do with the human body, but I put a car cover on here because it kind of covers the outside surfaces. So your skin on the outside is made of epithelial tissue. And even on your insides, anything that is exposed, like the inside part of your stomach or your intestines, that inside part is epithelial tissue. So it, they cover the body and they line the body on the inside and covers it on the outside. And so because it lines and covers the body surfaces, it has four major functions. Protection. So your skin is a type of epithelial tissue. It protects you from um, even serious chemicals or uh, UV rays or even certain bacteria or viruses. Epithelial tissue could absorb, so if you think about the inside of your intestines, the inside part of that tube is epithelial tissue, and any nutrients has to be absorbed through that epithelium. And then we have filtration, so if you look at your kidneys, your kidneys will actually absorb and also filtrate, so the inside part and the working part of your kidneys is actually made of epithelial tissue. And then secretion, secretion, think of your skin again, or any glands, oil glands or sweat glands on your skin, glands secrete different things that your body or is trying to get rid of, any toxins or even if any water if you're trying to cool yourself down. So that is a major function of epithelial tissues. So skin, stomach, glands, lungs, kidneys, intestines, other organs, they all, they kind of uh, separate the inside from the outside, the, your body from its external and internal environment. There are many different types of epithelial tissue, and you should be glad to know that you're not going to be responsible for knowing them. I pretty much just want you to know the general idea and function of epithelial tissue. But just as a side note, um, epithelial tissue is classified based on how, um, how many layers it's made out of and then what shape of the cell it is. So if it's only one layer of cell thick, we call it simple. And if it is more than one layer, we call it stratified because a strata is a layer. And then we name it based on the shape of the cell. So it's, it's, if, if it's a flat cell, we say it's squamous. And if it is a cube shape, we call it cuboidal. And then if it is a column shape or tall and skinny rectangular shape, we call it columnar. And then there's kind of transitional, which is a, a kind of all three shapes combined because it transitions from one shape to the next. And these are the types of epithelial tissues that make up your body. Let's look at some closer up examples. Up over here, this is simple squamous, so it's single cell flat of uh, flat cells. And if you look at a real picture of it, this is actually adipose. No, this is actually um, oh, the inside part of your lung. That's what you, the inside of your lung cells look like. Our next one is simple cuboidal. So there's a single layer of cube shape epithelial cells. And these are the ones that kind of make up the glands, like your sweat glands. And so there is um, also found in your kidneys. So that's a kidney picture of your cells. The next one is a simple columnar epithelium, one layer of very tall cells. 
And if you look at the columnar ones right here, this is found in the stomach. And then down in the right-hand corner, we have stratified squamous cells, and that's multiple layers of flat cells. And if we look at multiple layers of flat cells, the ones in your esophagus, that they kind of uh, get shoved off, and uh, the old ones get released and new ones kind of come up after it so that's stratified squamous and then uh, the funnest one to say pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelial cells these are the ones that are found in your lungs and they have little cilia hairs to actually prevent debris from going inside of your lungs and you can see them right here so lots of different types of epithelial tissue our next type of tissue is connective tissue connective tissue supports and it provides some protection it gives support it's able to store nutrients and it connects all your body parts together. It is the most abundant tissue type of the four in the body because it holds your body together. It's a glue that holds everything together. And so our bones, our ligaments, our tendons, our cartilage, blood, and even fat are the main types of connective tissue. And so this is actually a type of connective tissue called loose connective tissue because there's kind of a lot of space in between it but it looks like a bunch of spider webs again it binds body parts together over here this is what bone looks like I love bone it's very unique because it looks like kind of a tree stump in the cir concentric circles going around so that's bone tissue and then we have blood which is um, has different types of cells in it and then we have adipose which is fat tissue that looks like big hollow empty things but that's actually where the white blobs are pretty much where the fat is stored inside of them. So those are connective tissue. Looking at different, more examples of connective tissue, there's loose connective tissue, which we find under our outermost epithelial layer of the skin. So if we go down far enough into the dermis, you'll find connective tissue. And then over here, this is called fibrous connective tissue. That's what our tendons are made of. It has to be very, again, fibrous and thick in order to absorb the impact. We have fat tissue, which is adipose. We have cartilage tissue. This is called hyaline cartilage. It's found on the end of bones. Again, gives it some lubrication. And then we have bone tissue, and we also have blood, the, the major types of connective tissue. Looking at nervous tissue, nervous tissue's main function is to control and also to communicate. And so I have, it receives and transmits impulses. And I put, you know, the, um, the, can phone sort of things because it's having an impulse go from one side to the next and is our control center so it actually receives and transmits electrochemical impulses and that's how cells talk to one another your nerves and um, are the main part of your nervous tissue and there's a nerve cell right down there. Your spinal cord is made of nervous tissue, and of course, everybody knows that your brain is made of tons of different neurons. And so these are all different examples of what your neurons look like. This is more of a computer generation, but it's showing these signals that is going from one cell to the next. So it's for communication and controlling everything in your body. The last type of tissue is called muscle tissue, and it's obviously used for movement. What most people don't know is that there's actually um, more types of muscle in your body than the ones that, you know, your biceps and your triceps. That's the first type of muscle tissue. So besides allowing for controlled and uncontrolled movements, the ones that you know about are your voluntary. Voluntary means that you control the movement that you make. But we have a lot of involuntary reactions and movements in our body that we call uncontrolled movements or involuntary. And we have three different types of muscle tissue. We have cardiac muscle tissue, skeletal muscle tissue, and smooth muscle tissue. And so I want to start with skeletal muscle because this is the one that you know the best. These are the muscles that make up your body. You know, your biceps, your triceps, your hamstrings, your quads, your, um, your abs. Those are the ones that you have voluntary or controlled movements of. You could control what they do. However, we have two involuntary muscle tissues, which are your cardiac, which you should know is your heart. So your heart is a big muscle. Um, it contains all four tissue types, but the one that makes it contract and relax and pump the blood is actually cardiac muscle. We cannot control it. And they're made out of their cells look a little bit, the tissue looks a little bit different than what the skeletal muscle tissue would look like. And then we have smooth muscle, which makes up the kind of the inside parts of certain organs, particularly in the digestive system. So when you swallow something, there's muscular contractions along the digestive system through the esophagus, stomach, intestine, and the intestines that m make the food move from one end to the next. And those muscular contractions are done through smooth 
smooth muscle, and we cannot control those. Again, they, their, their tissue is a little bit different in shape and structure than that. So here they are under a microscope. Here is the skeletal muscle that you would find in your normal muscles of the body. And then we have our cardiac muscle tissue that's able to contract and relax and pump blood. And then in our organs, particularly our digestive system, we have smooth muscle that allows uh, muscular contractions to move um, food from one end to the other end of your digestive system. I also want to go over organs. So when you get a bunch of different tissues together, and those tissues work together to perform a certain function, you get something called an organ. And there's lots of different organs of the body. The one that I want to focus on is the heart. And the heart is not just, we just talked about cardiac muscle tissue, but it's made of more than just cardiac muscle tissue. Um, the, yeah, the muscle tissue is, you know, this thick wall right here, that's a muscle tissue for contractions. But there's also epithelial tissue on the outside and the inside part of these chambers that allow different things to go in and out. It's also made of connective tissue on the outside and the inside parts to hold the heart together and in close proximity to other organs and then we have nervous tissue that actually regulate how the muscles how the muscle tissue the cardiac muscle actually contracts and relax and pumps the blood and so an organ is actually compi comprised of all four different types of tissue no matter which organ you look at when organs get together and you can actually get an organ system and we have 11 different organ systems of the body that I would like to talk about very quickly. So a group of different organs that work together for a certain function is called an organ system. Let's talk about these one at a time. Our entire human body course is going to be in six units. The first unit is an uh, overview of um, chemistry and atoms and in kind of this introductory stuff. but from this point on, our next unit is going to be actually this one in the blue, which is the integumentary, skeletal, and muscular systems. And they cover, support, and move. So our unit two is going to be on cover, support, and movement. After that, we have our nervous and endocrine, which control and communicate um, everything in our body. And then our next unit is going to be on the circulatory or cardiovascular system and the immune or lymphatic system, which transports things around your body and also acts as protection. And then our next unit is going to be on the respiratory, digestive, and excretory system that provide energy and rid waste. And finally, the last one, hopefully we get to it, is a reproductive system, which is the oddball out because it produces offspring and the next generation by passing on your DNA. Let's talk about each one of these um, just as an overview. First one is the integumentary system. The integumentary system is pretty much the external or internal coverings of the body, so mainly epithelial tissue here. But it cushions, it protects uh, the body from any infections or injuries. It also protects the body against, again, your skin. You know that you block out harmful UV radiation because of your skin. Um, it also acts as an part of the excretory system where it actually releases any excess toxins or waste that you do not want. It helps regulate temperature through sweat glands and it also responds to any sort of sensory stimuli like pressure or temperature or any sort of pain stimulus. And the main structures found here are gonna be the skin, the hair, the nails and the glands. The next one is a skeletal system, which is pretty much a support system for the body. It holds you up. If you didn't have it, you'd be a big blob of tissue on the ground, and it protects any internal vital organs like your heart and lungs. And then it stores, um, stores minerals like calcium, and it also, your bone marrow is able to make blood cells for your cardiovascular system. Bones, cartilage, ligaments, and joints are the parts that you would probably know. Then we have the muscular system, which obviously allows for movement, and it also allows for, we talked about that smooth uh, muscle in your digestive tract that allows food to move through. Contractions of muscles produce heat, and it also helps to circulate your blood through contractions of the muscles around by. And the three main types are the three tissue types, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscles. The next organ system is a nervous system and this actually coordinates and controls everything that's going on in your body through these electrical and chemical reactions and it's how your cells talk to each other and you're able to maintain a homeostatic balance so your brain your spinal cord your nerves and your your eyes or your um, different sense organs your like your sense of smell or taste those are all part of the nervous system that will help coordinate everything inside of your body your endocrine system are pretty much all the glands in your body that release lots of different chemical hormones that provide you to grow and develop and reproduce and maintain how you do all your chemical reactions or your metabolism. So your endocrine system is vital, as are all your systems, to maintain a balanced 
homeostasis. So some different glands in your body that we're going to talk about when we get here is the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the thyroid, the thymus, the parathyroid, the adrenal, the pancreas, liver, and the ovaries, and the testes. The next is a circulatory system, which is often interchanged with the cardiovascular system. It depends on what book you use. So the circulatory system is pretty much talking about the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood that goes through the vessels, and how it transports the nutrients you need in order to make the energy. So you need oxygen and you need glucose, which goes to your cells for cellular respiration, but it's transported through your circulatory system. And it also helps fight infections because white blood cells is a is a defender of your body. And it also removes any toxic waste, takes them to the kidneys and your kidneys filter them out of the blood. And it helps regulate your body temperature as well. Next one is the immune or lymphatic system. This is the protector or the police department of your body because it fights off any foreign invaders. And it, it does consist of this fluid called lymph fluid. And you're, it works very closely with your circulatory system or cardiovascular system in order to make sure that you know your body's working properly. So your defenders of the body include your white blood cells, your thymus, your spleen, your lymph nodes and vessels, and even your appendix, which was previously, previously, previously thought not to have much of a role at all, but we found out it has a lymphatic or immune response. The next one is re the respiratory system, which functions for to supply the oxygen and rid the carbon dioxide and needed for cellular respiration to make your ATP. Uh, eventually, respiratory and the circulatory system work together closely in order to deliver the CO2 and the oxygen to and from your body. But your nose, your pharynx, your larynx, your trachea, the bronchi, and your lungs that go to your lungs um, are all different parts of the respiratory system. Your digestive system obviously breaks down food and then absorbs any nutrients nutrients and then anything it doesn't it gets rid it gets rid of as waste product and so your mouth your esophagus stomach small large intestine and your rectum are the major players in your digestive system then we have our excretory system sometimes it's solely referred to as your urinary system but i'm going to include the skin and even the lungs in this one and your liver that helps get rid of wastes but uh, the urinary system is the main one here um, helps regulate your water and even your electrolyte balance. Your skin, lungs, liver, kidneys, the ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra are the main ones in your urinary or excretory system. And last but not least is the one that produces your offspring, which is your reproductive system because it helps you make gametes. And it also, if you're female particularly, helps you nurture and protect the embryo or the baby after that time as well. And so if you're a guy, testes, the scrotum, the vas deferens, urethra, the penis, the prostate, if you're a lady, the ovaries, uterus, vagina, fallopian tubes, and the mammary glands are different players of the reproductive system. So overall, remember, this is how our year is going to be set up. We're going to do covering support and movement, and then we're going to do control and communication, transport and protection, energy and waste, and offspring. And I hope that was helpful.